Welcome to the Bourbon Friday Show. We are talking business and bourbon. I'm your host, Nick Niehaus, and this week our sponsor is Spectrum Reach. And I'll tell you what, if you ever thought about using television ads in your business, this is your opportunity. For only $250, you can get started, extremely affordable. You don't have to have your own video, you can just bring pictures in, and you can target individual people, you can choose demographics, all kinds of great stuff. So there is no excuse not to be using television ads. Use the link above this video to go check it out now. All right, so I'm talking to Jenny Bristow today, who is the CEO of Anvil Analytics and Insights. So Jenny, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Nick. Yeah, Love of course. Being here. Well, so let's just start out with the simple stuff. Tell me a little bit about Anvil. Sure, so Anvil is a marketing and analytics agency. So okay. we're based down in uh, downtown Clayton. Um, we are about four years old and we've grown really quickly. So we're at 25 employees wow. at this point. That's awesome. Our big differentiator and area of focus is really marketing analytics and business intelligence. Okay. So we consider ourselves a marketing optimization agency. We love going in when people already have campaigns going, usually when they've already been working with another agency, coming in, really helping with attribution modeling and helping them hmm. understand ROI of their marketing spend and then pouring gasoline on the fire and helping everything accelerate. That's awesome. Okay. Okay, well, it's going to be good because yeah. I love marketing. That's what we do too. It's going to be yeah. a lot of fun. And uh, analytics and attribution are some of the hardest parts of this, right? Yes, so it sounds like you guys is. have really figured some of this out. <laughs> so I'm going to have some personal questions yeah. as well, right? Cool. So uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, you're only four years old, yeah. growing like crazy. So that's awesome. Yeah. So obviously you've, you know, found a, a niche or you found kind of this, this spot, right? So you're talking about yeah. working with these companies. What are the things that they're having so much trouble measuring? Like, what are you helping them learn? Yeah. So. A couple of different things. So first, most of our clients that we began working with initially, and then even today, mm -hmm. uh, the, our main point of contact is usually the CMO or the marketing director, and sure. they want to go out to wine or happy hour and ask us, what is business intelligence? Okay. Like my CFO <laughs> is telling me wow. I need to have all these attribution models in place, and I have a traditional PR and communications background. I don't even really know where to start. Okay. And so we love helping them move their education forward at the same time of moving the company's measurement plan forward. And so okay. many times we'll come in and they've been working with an agency and they'll be giving them numbers like the number of clicks and the number of impressions. Sure. And we're like, no, 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 we want customer lifetime value. And we mm. want to understand the total revenue driven by phone call and getting really specific with the numbers wow. to really help them understand where that money should be spent, be most effective to grow. Okay. Mm. So breaking this down a little bit further. Give me kind of a case study or an example of this, right? So what yeah. is so obviously you're telling you they have some of the the surface level data, so to speak. Yeah. Um, somebody comes to you, they get started. Do you have maybe a case study you yeah. could you could I talk have about so a little bit? Yeah, studies. I think that'd be really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So one case study is with a healthcare system. Okay. So first of all, uh, multiple hospital websites. Hmm. Uh, so you have that problem first of all with okay. different domains that don't talk to each other nicely with analytics on the back end. Okay. And then they have a third party platform that they use to schedule appointments. So they were working with a big agency out of Chicago when the agency said, well, you know, we can help track it from the ad to when they go to your website, but when they click through to make the appointment, that's another company. We cannot track anything on that appointment website. Oh, okay. And so there's a wall. Hmm. And so we came in and we began working with that appointment platform, was able to integrate tags. And so for the first time, this hospital system could do front to end tracking to hmm. say this keyword, let's say urgent care near me, drove X number of real appointments. Gotcha. And we also helped them with cross domain tracking to figure out how can we make sure that if people jump from, let's say the main website to the pediatric website, they're not double counted as new visitors. It's the same sure. visitor across the board. Interesting. And so that just helps them make sure that the numbers they're looking at are accurate mm -hmm. and as uh, targeted and real as possible. Gotcha. Very cool. Well, so why do you think a lot of existing agencies aren't doing this? You know, what, yeah. why, what's the point of saying we'll get you to here and then mm -hmm. we won't touch it? I mean, I'll is that honest, just an outdated model? Or it's what? really hard. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> it yeah. is really, really hard. Okay. So we call ourselves nerdy marketers because okay. the vast majority of people on our team are technical instead of creative. Oh, so interesting. Okay. for us, we don't do any branding. We do copywriting, but only to support things that data tell, tells us will work. Hmm. So we have data scientists, data analysts, developers. Um, the, the capital cost of building a team of data scientists and analysts to be able to implement tracking to that mm -hmm. level is very high. Gotcha. And so a lot of traditional agencies and even digital agencies don't, just don't think that they need to invest that money right now. And okay. so they think like, oh, our clients are okay with getting high level conversion mm -hmm 
numbers mm -hmm. um, when in reality, like the shift really is going our direction. So we actually have a lot of agencies that white label us. Oh, really? Okay. And so we do all their measurement behind the scenes. And cool. Then let yeah, them so they can really do the creative and uh -huh. gotcha. And they have that as the back end. All yeah. right. Interesting. So is that, uh, do you see that as a big kind of the growth focus for you or do you still plan to work directly with a lot of the customers? Directly with brands is really our sweet spot. Gotcha. Yeah, sure. But we do a, quite a bit of work with agencies across the country to do that also. So um, that's really rewarding and fulfilling to us. We find a lot of enjoyment personally for everybody on the team mm -hmm. and helping people level up their technical skills on the analytics space, sure. whether it's clients or agencies. So Very cool. Well, I think that, that aspect of kind of educating yeah. is really interesting because right now, you know, we talked to a lot of customers about how the idea of sales is almost dying yeah. because by the time somebody calls you, they've already been sold, exactly. right? I mean, they've already made their decision. So really it's the marketing that's making the sale at this Absolutely. point. But yet a lot of these, we work with a lot of small businesses, they're still very much in the, I need to go meet people and do my numbers and do my yeah. sales calls. And they aren't trying at all to learn about marketing, mm -hmm. right? It's just a black box exactly. still, right? Um, exactly. We deal with video and a lot of them are like, I've heard for the past three years, I need to use video. And I'm like, that's as far as you got in yeah. three years? That's like the extent of the understanding. Exactly. <laughs> three years and you, uh, I've just heard it a bunch of times, right? So so the education parts, you know, I think really needed right now and it's becoming a bigger and bigger, uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind of issue for companies. I mean, are you seeing the same things? I think you work with probably bigger oh, companies huge. than we typically see, but it sounds yeah. like they're all having the same problem. It's huge. And their databases and platforms are a mess, regardless of the size of companies. Yeah. I mean, we work with some Fortune 500 size companies and they come to us and their data is just as messy as those smaller, you know, $5 wow. million a year companies. So really? there's no magical size where once you're spending a certain amount of money on marketing, everything works. And <laughs> figure it you out. Know? Yeah. No, it just gets messier and it's a bigger problem to unravel. So. I mean, I'll be honest, like, we still have not found a single Google Analytics in, uh, install that's mm -hmm. accurate. And wow. all of the audits that we've done, there's always something wrong. Really? Yeah, they're, they're always either double counting visitors, cross domain isn't set up correctly, conversions aren't tagging correctly, they're under or over attributing. So wow. there's always something going on, because it's hard. I sure. Mean, it isn't as easy as putting code on a website anymore. Yeah, well, that brings up an interesting aspect of this, which is, data and all this information is great, but when it's wrong, oh. it's even more dangerous than not having it, I would imagine, Absolutely. right? When you're talking about double counting traffic, mm -hmm. you think you're doing twice as well as you are, and you yeah. think your conversion is the problem, and actually maybe there's just not as many people there as you thought. Exactly. Yeah, so that's a that's a significant issue. So mm -hmm. from the education side of things, I mean, where do, you, uh, where do you see people needing the most education? Like what are the parts of this that they're, yeah. they're totally in a at a loss for right now? Honestly, foundational. Okay. So I have a presentation that I give, I've given it a few times now, that's something as basic as what's the difference between a report, analytics, and business intelligence. Okay. Some starting at that level from a foundational perspective is really important because we see, even at the CMO level, they throw around these terms like, hey, I need a dashboard for this, or I want a report that shows this, when really mm -hmm. they're talking about a dashboard. And so helping them understand the difference and when they need to pull each kind of tool mm -hmm. from their tool belt or ask their team to generate that kind of a resource for them is really important. So starting at that level and then going up from there, Sure. As far as uh, visualizations and what kind of data is appropriate for what level of seniority within the company mm, and okay. kind of educating about data storytelling. Yeah, is so also they don't know anything important. basically. You're kind of starting from the, the very yeah, basics. Well, yeah, yeah, and I would say like they know a lot. I mean, the sure. people we work with are so intelligent. Well, I guess, sorry, I don't mean to say I know, that I know. in general I just about, wanted, yeah, I just about to data. Because yeah. our clients are amazing. It sounds like clients are all really dumb. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. but most of the reports they've done, that has been sufficient. That's all they could get. Sure, And okay. so if they were doing a traditional PR campaign, the reach number was literally the only number they could get. And so wow. they were knocking it out of the park if they had that accurate or as close as it could be. Cool. You know, and so things have just changed. Yeah, just so much more to, to yeah. deal with now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to take a step back to something you mentioned earlier, um, which is one of these examples of a term that I think people yeah. don't understand. And um, that was the lifetime value, yes. right? So understanding what an individual customer over the lifetime is going to be worth. Yeah. And for a lot of small business in particular, 
they're so concerned about the next sale yep. that I think a lot of them actually cancel advertising and marketing because they're not measuring the lifetime value, yes. right? So so pretend like I don't know what that means and, and explain mm -hmm. that to us and, and the viewers. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're thinking about measuring lifetime value for a user or a new customer from your marketing spend, that's when you start evaluating the conversion based off how much money they're spending with you for continuous purchases. So not just the initial purchase that they made, but perhaps they'll come back and buy from you four more times over the next year. And it's actually interesting because the phrase lifetime mm -hmm. is a little deceiving because companies measure that differently. Sometimes lifetime within an organization can mean 12 months. Okay. Sometimes it's five years. Hmm. And so we find sitting down and making people define what is your lifetime within your organization? Sure. How far out or backwards do you want to go is important because we've seen people working with numbers and then within the C-suite, they don't understand the definition. Hmm. And so one person will think it means literally the, all the money they've ever spent with you going mm -hmm. back forever. And other people thinks it means within one year or five years. Interesting. So I actually have a really cool case study about that. So we work with a uh, e-commerce company here in town. It's a manufacturing company, so they make their own products. And um, for simplicity's sake, let's say they sell 10 products. Five of their products they believe are the flagship products. So the initial products a customer will buy to mm -hmm. become an, a product or a customer for the first time. Okay. They have their money marketing money kind of peanut butter spread across those five. Sure. We went in and actually looked at the data and helped them understand that customer lifetime value for product A was four times higher hmm. than any of the other products. Wow. So that meant even though you may be making the same $50 per sale initially for all five of those products, for customer A or product A, they'll end up spending four times more over the Holy life. Cow. So it completely shifted their marketing budget and how they tried to acquire customers moving forward. And so that's what we mean when we're talking about getting past initial numbers because many agencies will tell you like, okay, that conversion was $50, but mm -hmm. getting in an understanding like lifetime and moving money around according to that is, you know, yeah, the next level dig where into people the data. need to get. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, so for, for taking this, you know, keeping it kind of basic for yeah. us, right? Maybe what's the first thing beyond this this data that's very easy to find, right? It's sitting sure. there in the ads manager or whatever. What's kind of the, the most popular next thing somebody should be trying to measure? Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you know, lifetime question. value is a big one, but is there anything else that's kind of like, you know, maybe a first step you could take? Or? Yeah. Well, um, so a couple of things. First, trying to find ways to track offline conversions. Mm -hmm. So it's very common for people to not have call tracking in place. So mm. call tracking is so important. Sure. Uh, there's great tools like CallRail is one that we use really often. You just put a simple piece of code on the website. Whenever somebody calls, then behind the scenes, it actually tracks the source of that phone call. Oh, wow. And okay. then you can track back, okay, this keyword is how they found me and why they called. And then you can track that in your CRM to see if a sale was made. Wow. And so you're tracking that. And you can do the same thing with, if you go to a trade show, for example, you can do cohort analysis. And anybody mm. that came to your website, um, within that time frame, within that geography, you can track them as a separate group to see if they behave differently gotcha. than normal people that come to your website. So tracking offline sources is super important. Um, and then honestly, just auditing your tracking setup hmm, would be the okay. very first thing I would recommend because yeah. you can get into all these cool cohort analysis and things, but if your tracking is inaccurate and beyond Google Analytics, so if you're doing Google ads or Facebook ads mm -hmm. or even email marketing, making sure all the tagging is in place and okay. correct is super important. So like I said, we do white labeling for a lot of big agencies. They'll call us and they'll be like four months in on a campaign for this huge national brand and the Facebook tracking pixel isn't in place. Uh, what? And so I know, and, but it's, oh, they're moving, man. they're moving fast. They don't yep. have checklists and quality assurance in place. I mean, oh, I understand man. how it happens, but, um, that definitely is a really big thing that is easy to fix. Yeah. Well, when it was there in the beginning, you yeah. go back and you have, have all the data, right? Yeah. But, yeah. So, uh, another aspect of this one to ask about, because you see a lot of data yeah. would be, are there any particular marketing tactics, certain ad mm -hmm. platforms that you're seeing a better ROI or better numbers from? Are there any trends that you're able to kind of yeah. tell us about, you know, that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, for us, we tend to always uh, prefer bottom of the funnel tactic. So as close as okay. you can get to the actual conversion point of somebody being ready to make a buying decision is where we always try to maximize spend. So okay. I know it's boring, but Google Ads is still a huge winner in our book. A lot of our okay. clients spend a massive amount of money there. 
And the big thing we tell them is they say, you know, I have an extra 10,000 a month to spend on ads. Uh, let's put it on Facebook. And I'll mm -hmm. say, oh, there's an extra 10,000 we can still spend on Google where people are ready to make that decision. They're specifically searching for your service. Gotcha. Spend it there first because the cost per acquisition will be a lot less than if you go to somebody who's your target audience, but they're not in buying mode. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So we consider that more of an upper, upper funnel. So okay. I know it's boring, but you got to, in our mind, we maximize each step of the funnel in order to make sure that we're, yeah. you know, getting the best cost per acquisition. I don't think making more money is ever really boring. I right? know, well, <laughs> but it's not sexy to, like, there's sure. no like magic not, bullet that we fun. found that's yeah, like, oh, yeah, there's this it. new ad platform that is sure, a dollar yeah, person version. Get on version. TikTok and try I know, that, right? or, you know, no, it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Do the basics and measure well. Gotcha, very cool. Well, this is yeah. all really good stuff. So I do want to ask you, you have an event coming up, right? Yeah, we Let do. Let me make sure we talk about that, because yeah. obviously this is, you know, a lot of stuff I'm sure you'll be talking about at the event. Tell us about that. That. Yeah, so uh, this event was really a brainchild of conversations we were having internally at Anvil because, again, all of us are super passionate about driving education within our clients and agency partners that mm -hmm. we work with. And so uh, we were actually the title sponsor at MDMC this year. And in chatting with Perry over there, we were telling him that we were thinking about putting on an analytics conference. And he said, oh, if you do it, we'll sponsor you. Like, oh. We want to do that, but cool. you will do it better than us because that's your expertise. So we will sponsor you if you do that. And so that was kind of the final kick in the butt that we said, okay, we're doing this. So it's a full day conference. It's October 17th, Innovation Hall down to the Cortex District. The exciting thing is for us, Anvil is only speaking in two of the slots. We've brought in a variety of experts from around the country to be able to speak and talk about how they've successfully implemented analytics into their marketing decision-making cool. process. We have our keynote speaker is uh, from MasterCard. We have um, a woman from Ascension coming and talking about healthcare compliance for tracking data. Hmm. We have people from Maryville University, Wash U, Enterprise Bank, um, the list goes on and on. You can go to dataoverinstinct.com to learn more. Ticket sales are actually going to be closing on the 10th. So we only have oh. a couple of days left in order to, to grab a ticket. ticket. Then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and we sold out of our early bird ticket. So uh, we think we're going to sell out of the entire event, which wow. we're super excited That's about. Awesome. Yeah, but we're excited because this is the first event in the Midwest that focuses on educating senior marketing leaders on marketing analytics and how to sure. use that. Um, and so this will be the first of an annual event. We have the date for next year we're going to be announcing at the conference this year. Oh, really? Year, so, okay, we're ready yeah. to go. We're cool. excited about it. I like it. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, for eight people like marketing I know, analytics, for nerdy right? People. Yeah, for nerdy people. That's, I think it sounds like fun. So, yeah. cool. Well, we, we have a couple minutes left in the show here. So, I want to shift gears a little bit and we are going to welcome the founder of the event here, uh, Bourbon Friday, Eric, onto the show. And he has selected a bourbon just right. for you. So, we're going to talk about that. What exactly. Do we got? So, I have selected Jim Beam Single Barrel. Okay. And normally I do a lot of research on the guests, deep Googling the person, whatever. But I thought since we're talking about data and analytics, that kind of thing, let's think about that. So what I did is I came up with a list of bourbons and how I did that was it's the top seven selling bourbons in the United States. Why seven? Because of the top 20 whiskeys, only seven of them were bourbons. Oh, nice. Okay. So, okay. That's uh, Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, Evan Williams, Makers, Bullet, Woodford. Who am I missing? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we'll post the link to the list later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I then, to confirm that in popularity, I did a, I looked at what, what that is in Google searches and oh, who's the most popular. Nice. And actually did confirm that those were... Uh, the most popular as well. There was one on the list of bourbons that was, with the exception of Jack Daniels, was nearly as popular. Can you guess what that was? But that was not in those top top selling. So it's searched, but it's not sold Search. in large quantities. Right. Oh, was it Pappy's? It is Pappy's. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it is Pappy's. Mm -hmm. So, so I, from there, I went in and I looked at who has the most cookies. And that was Jack Daniels, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything because cookies can yeah. be doing a variety of things. Uh, so then I went with Built With, which actually analyzed the technologies that every website uses. And it nice. actually ended up being Jim Beam using the most uh, tracking and, and, and analysis technologies on their website. I love wow. it. Which is why we have Jim Beam. Yeah. I love well, not just it. normal Jim Beam, though. No, right? no. Mm -hmm. Better Jim Beam. Better Jim Beam. <laughs> 
<laughs> so. Fair enough. Well, thank you, Eric. It's pretty you good. Bet. It's I better than normal, it. Jimmy. Right. I like it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we got a couple minutes. We got some events coming up to talk about. We today. do. But before we mention that, I do want to say that we have now launched the audio version oh, of the yeah. show. Cool. Uh, we're about halfway up, but we're currently on Spotify. As soon as we have everything up, we'll be on iTunes and Google. I just didn't want to bother submitting. Uh, and Spotify is much faster. Uh, but then starting on Monday, we have the USGIF Geospatial Gateway Forum. It's at America Center. Um, that's the 7th through the 9th, but on, on the 7th, T-Rex has the USGIF Young Professionals Group Panel and Networking Event uh, that night. And then Tuesday, there's the Brews and Breakthroughs at Alpha Brewing. And this is really talking about medical breakthroughs that are actually happening here in St. Louis. Oh, neat. Hmm. Over beers. That's and exciting. if you like sours, Alpha is, Alpha is the place to go. Oh, yeah. And then Wednesday night, we have another Geosource Unleashed at T-Rex. This, the title of that event is Accuracy and Precision in Geospatial Information. We'll put some more information out there about what that's really about. Uh, <laughs> then, of course, on Thursday, we have Venture Cafe. Some of the highlights from that are a retrospective on running a game dev studio by Butterscotch Shenanigans, uh, funding roadmap by I-10, and jobs for the future of St. Louis, and that's put on by Wiser U. And then Friday, we're back here for another great Bourbon Friday at Kobo. We have Ann Joy from Black Dress, Black Dress Circle, okay. and she is an award-winning coach, consultant, speaker, um, you know, conference, organiza <laughs> conference organizer. She's wonderful. Yes. yes. She is here. great. We've, you know, or well, you have actually worked with her on yeah. like well, we producing. Yeah, we some live yeah. streaming. So I mean, yeah. I know she's going to do a good job. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She'll be a great host. Yeah. Uh, and then that, she, she's going to be talking about, you know, her own business, but then also she's going to be talking about another event coming up. I believe on October 18th called A Quiet Mind is a High Performance Mind. And this is with Matthew Ferry, a master life coach and best-selling author. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sorry, I just drank that bourbon. <laughs> like, ah, Look, I am. Yeah. Swallowed at the wrong moment, but yeah, we're looking forward to all that. So Eric, as always, thank you for joining mm -hmm. us. Great selection this week. I love it. Jenny, thank you so much for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was Great fun. conversation. Yeah, me too. Um, I want to thank you for tuning in. So we have a couple people and organizations to thank. Obviously, first of all, thank you so much to Spectrum Reach for being this week's sponsor. Definitely appreciate that. Thank you to Kovo for hosting us, the, both the event and the show here. Uh, thank you to EQ for helping us stream and providing your audience. And of course, thank you to Ian Brown behind the scenes doing the production on the show every single week for us. This is the Bourbon Friday Show. We want to thank you for tuning in this week, and we will see you again next Friday at 4.30. Talk to you then. Hey, thanks for watching. We truly hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share this episode, and if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. To stay up to date, follow us on social. We are at Bourbon Fridays on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. See you next time.